previously in Elements of War. Her name is Aerith. Wave of blue. <laughs> like a thunderclap, it ripples through your body. You keep looking back towards the door. You can find it's Bo. A veil. You hear an actual voice this time. Follows guards. You have essentially been guided. B. You have been in a rather heated debate with a few elves. We actually showed them a pendant. They actually snatched it up. <laughs> the guards now dogpile on you. I haven't seen a new face in here for a while. You can call me Sprite. I am planning to get out of here. It's a little bit of an escape. I have an acquaintance. Yeah, okay. You guys take that moment to keep running. He has some mysterious dungeon that has appeared in his basement. Then again, I also used magic and have no idea how to use it, so some advice would be useful. I don't kill. I am going to kill you with your elements of war. You guys take all three. Of course, you're focusing on the dungeon one. Make your way over. Prime is a big place. The population of Prime is like 600,000. This place oh. is massive. Is there a general store on the way? This is the one place where you could probably find just about anything. It's like any general store. Like one that looks slightly magical. Stepping in, looking around, it's about what you'd expect. Just all sorts of trinkets and supplies just kind of laid about. There is a young adult woman. She's a bit more on the, the pudgy side. She welcomes you in. I want to know more about this carved bone statue and this engraved bone dice because the dice is scary and it's made of bone. I just kind of dump it on the table and be like, what are these? She takes a quick look at them. She doesn't seem to really recognize any particular importance about them. She had to take a wild guess. She would think some kind of, maybe like a holy or even like a cult symbol. Chances are the dice and the statuette are probably either decorations for said things or ritual pieces for it. As for the rest of the stuff, the handkerchief and the chalice, she just, she doesn't think much of it rather than it's just kind of random it? stuff, so. Okay, I'm just gonna sell them. She takes them out, gives you a go. So, um, can you tell if people are magical? <laughs> Me? Oh, no, no, no. I, I can't do that. Do you have anything that might like, help with learning magic? You want to learn magic? Or you want somebody to help you with magic? I don't know. Is there a difference? I, I could help you. I am a spellcaster. You're magic? Well, yes. Musically magical, but magical. Uh. I'd be willing to try and help you. I I'm not sure how much I could help you, but... Like, the first time that Vale ever looks something other than terrified, like you just see this one glint in his eyes like oh, thank you i have no idea if it'll work but thanks in the dungeon i think that you'd be able to actually do you have dungeons from the world you come from what okay. wait you mean like where you keep people like in, in like a prison well i mean sort of kind of just go through it clear it out sometimes monsters inside oh traps oh <laughs> <laughs> Dale's casually thinking to himself, so this is like the one of those weird movie video game things. Great. I'm gonna die. No, <laughs> Goes no, back no. To looking terrified. No, 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 no. Bale no. isn't an anime nerd. Wow. I have a plan. Um, <laughs> so I have a throw plan. him into a dungeon and figure it the fuck out. Well, that's part of the plan. But <laughs> the first part of the plan. The thing is, I, I don't know what kind of caster you are. And well, I doubt you know, unless you I do know. Even... Okay. I... Apparently I can do magic. I just don't I don't know. I thought I thought the goat could breathe fire on their own. I don't think so. I mean maybe. I, I doubt it though. Well Eris is scary, but something that helps me figure out that I have magic and the way I learned magic, it, it sort of um I think it's very mental, having a sense of self and knowing <laughs> Knowing about yourself, so have you seen I, what you look like? I know I have these pointed ears. And well, like, have you looked in the mirror? Well, apparently I'm not an elf like I was thinking. Okay, I'm gonna shape change into veil. A matter of seconds, you see Bo just changing the veil. Um, I think I need to. Do, this would. I think I need a constitution <laughs> check. <laughs> He's very dizzy, barely standing. I mean, it kind of looks like me, but what the fuck? Yes, this is do what I, you look like. He's gonna like eyes? do a little turnaround. Wait a second, are my eyes cat eyes? Well, yes. What? Is there anything else my body is hiding? Well, uh, that's for you to explore on your own. I'm not gonna help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not what I meant at all. I, well, I, either way, for me, it helped me to, I guess, sort of uh, figure out who I am. Do I just kind of point and hope something happens? Well, I mean, I played the violin and stuff happens, so maybe? Just have confidence. I'm gonna attempt to cast Eldritch Blast. Are you casting like it on me? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just pointing, like, in a general direction. Just gonna attack the street? I don't fucking know. I'm waiting for the kid just to start crying in the distance. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm gonna back the fuck up so it looks like I'm not part of this party. Yeah. You so kinda I, I like... just kind of like, does it work like this? And then I just kind of put my hands out in front of me, like, trying to make, like, a ball in my hand. Yeah. And... You guys watch Bailey, like, very nervously, kind of like, eh, looks, takes his hand out. Sure enough, you see this kind of bubble of force is just... 
fires off. There's a kid crying. Not because you hit him, but this ice cream guy just. (laughs) 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 You hit that kid's ice cream! Like, yeah, like kicks his face and like. Like ten feet around him, <laughs> he just starts. He just made me lose bawling for the sake of it. Nobody saw you, and everyone's wondering why his kid's ice cream just exploded. <laughs> What's like that? I'm an amazing teacher. Why'd you look at that? You'll do great in the dungeon. It'll, it's, it'll, it'll be fine. Okay. All you need is confidence. Confidence. He's just gonna pat on Vale on the back like you got this. You guys, push forward. I'll start heading towards the tavern. As you guys have made some distance at this point, about thirty minutes, forty-five minutes of traveling. You guys can see what appears to be the same entrance that you guys had actually came in from, from the south. Very similar to you guys. They get scanned, checked, and everything. There is, I'll say, about five individuals here. And they all are appeared to be dressed up in this kind of heavy armor. A few of them seem to be kind of silver. One of them adamantium. And a couple of them steel. The lead who stands probably about six foot one. Seems to take a sheet of paper and read it over. And gives instructions to the others. It appears to be a stern, feminine voice. And she gives instructions for her crew to have scanned the area and she appears to be looking for Rockies. She needs information there. Basically, with how big his town is, she sends them off all one by one to find out where his tavern is. As she looks over her notes again, takes paper, sh- 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 rolls it up, and kind of stuffs it away before making her way deeper into the city. You guys, with some time, managed to finally find the tavern that you were looking for. It took a little longer than you expected, but as you double check the quest and then triple check it, you definitely find the place as the door swings open. You actually notice it's rather empty, actually. There's a few stragglers there. Overall, it is a fairly empty tavern. There appears to be an older gentleman behind the bar, obviously the tavern keeper of this place. There appears to be kind of cleaning up just a bit, and his attention kind of snaps to the door as he sees you guys stepping in. He was kind of like dreary look on his face, kind of bored expression. But you guys step in, he seems kind of light up. He's like, oh, oh, uh, so, uh, how can I help you? All? Dungeon. I'm gonna walk up to him, ruffle through the sh- three sheets of paper, get the one that says his thing, and put it on the counter. <laughs> Slide it down. He takes a moment, scoops it up, and looks at it. Oh, oh, wonderful. Oh, are you here to... Oh, yes, yes, here. Please, follow me. Gestures for you guys to step around. This seems to go deeper into the tavern. There appears to be like a set of stairs that goes deeper down to a basement area, and he kind of makes small talk on his way there. Oh, well, thank you guys for sure. I had this fantastic idea. I didn't even know this was down here until recently. I wanted to open an attraction for adventurers to come and explore if they want to, you know? Really try to bring in business. But the issue is there's monsters down there. And I, I can't really deal with them myself, so I was uh, I was hoping that maybe you could be. He's gonna give a big thumbs up. He brings you further down. Where he brings you, you can see it's kind of like just a normal like storage for a basement. And he brings you to an area that's obviously been rustled up a bit. Stuff's been thrown aside and boxes pushed away. What had been behind these boxes appears to be a almost unfinished part of the tavern. The wooden boards kind of come up and they just stop all perfectly kind of around this stone door. And the the stone door appears to look about like any wooden door, honestly. It seems to have these runes that kind of run up along the side of it. It also appears to have a metal handle attached to it. The tavern keeper kind of looks back to you guys. Um, you're free to go in. Are, are you sure you can handle this? Do you know what kind of monsters we're dealing with? Or just monsters? Well, I don't know very well, but um, the, the short bit that I explored, I, I did hear like really big bugs crawling, you know? I was able to poke around a little bit. <laughs> There's definitely, there's a big stone door. It has a couple of, of torches on it. I I couldn't really reach them, so it, I don't know. If you could figure that out, you might be able to go deeper. Because I don't really know how deep it goes. But I did hear uh, there's probably some rats down there and um, zombies or something. Thankfully, they were behind a cage, so they really couldn't get me. But it was still scary, nonetheless. Actually, wait, I'm going to turn to the part. How many of us have dark vision? Hi. What, what's dark vision, sorry? Can you see in the dark? I don't know. Is it dark right now? Well, you wait. You're a tea No, thing. I don't like, have dark vision. <laughs> Neither. I, I know that I do, but Rail has no I idea. I will say B, B should have dark vision. I think Amira has dark vision, too. I think Vale yeah. should, too. Me and you don't, so. Right. I'm going to speak for Vale and say that, yes, he has dark vision. Yeah, Vale's a tea thing. He has dark vision. I can see in the dark. <laughs> yeah, you'll see in shades of gray. Well, then, if there's a torch mm-hmm. down there, um, Reminds me of a it's book. mine. I, I've called oh, it. Or, yeah, there is a torch. Where, there's a very, it's very high on that stone door, but it illuminates most of the room. All right. I want to just cast light on my weapon. <laughs> see, Iris is a warhammer. Just... <laughs> Is there anything you want to ask this man before you guys start poking around? And you said we could keep if we find something down there, right? 
Oh, I, yes, I, I really just want to clear it out. So, I, I mean, I mean, look at me. Uh, I, would, I don't think I would have much use for the stuff down there. He's going to clasp his hands and just be like, Oh, dungeon move and dinner. Let's go. <laughs> 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 Okay. No. He opens the door for you. You guys kind of like help him because he's like he's like older, kind of scrawny, frail man. So he kind of like he tries to open the door to be polite, but it's kind of like uh, with like a little bit of a group effort. The door just kind of pulls open one by one. You guys step in. I'm gonna ask him if he's gonna keep the door open. Oh, uh, I, I I can. Do you want me to keep the door? Open? It doesn't lock. I don't think so. It would be easier to keep it open in case of emergencies. Oh, I, I see. Yes, I will. I'll leave it. You're welcome to your first dungeon. Oh, that's terrifying. Oh, Is that so a dead boring. person already? Maybe we should have asked if he already Dinner. sent other adventurers down here. <laughs> <laughs> if there are, it's more loot for us. So down to the right, you can see some rats. They seem mostly uninterested with you. Doing at something on the ground towards the grate in the middle. To your left, there appears to be a gated wooden door and you can hear moans as you can see what is clearly a couple of undead figures. I would like to pick the shield up. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> why, oh why no! Words? It's trapped. It is. <laughs> well, it's a mimic. Well, you guys watch this man comes up and reach down and grab the shield veil. You like pull on it. You realize it's like it's kind of stuck a little bit. Kind of like pull on it. It's like Droof. it's stuck in place just a bit. As you try to work it off the skeleton, you suddenly you feel the the hand like, grab a hold of yours. The skeleton starts to rattle as it pulls itself up. You hear a small hiss. Yeah, that skeleton's not dead. Everyone around me initiative. Rats. <laughs> you said they were nice. <laughs> I didn't say they're nice. I said they're nibbling or something. Amira, it looks like you're first to go. I'm gonna slice him. 15. That will strike. Nine points of damage and sneak attack. You quickly dispose of the skeleton. One strike. Poof, it is very fragile. Very weak. You see Amira comes up. So there's a swift stab of the dagger. The skeleton. This time instead of just being like a laying corpse it shatters into pieces. Its bones it's kind of scattering everywhere. I'm gonna pick up the <laughs> shield and it against Vale's chops. There you go. There's a shield. Thank right. you. This rat comes skittering up. It is now immensely interesting in you guys seems to have lost its nibbling appetite. It's gonna come like that. And you know what? It's gonna go ahead and dash just a bit. It's gonna come right here. But it's unfortunately all it can do though. Hey, you're up. I would like to use my blunder bus on the red. <laughs> <laughs> A fire on attack. 11. That was a base roll of three. You came pretty close to this fire. Shut sure. up, shut up. That actually misses. Ears should caught by surprise. Your ears are probably ringing too. As you hear it's just loud as <laughs> spread of bullets just spray past you. You guys watch several pellets just <laughs> spark off the walls around you. However, the rat looks unscathed. <laughs> None of them hit the rat at all. You know what? Just because B's now mad, I will do the probably worst thing ever, and I would immediately immediately like to use my accent shirt. I would like to use my pepper box. What's with the threes? <laughs> what that B would like to take his pepper box and fucking toss it on the floor. <laughs> Harris, your ears are not ringing anymore. You hear another <laughs> This enclosed space just makes it all that much worse. You guys watch like a singular palette now. It just, you swear you watch like a bit of the rat's hair just cuts off the top of it. But he still missed it. The bullet skitter and sparks off the rocks behind it. And then you watch B. I was shoot straight. <laughs> you see bees take a step around and yes! Vale, you're up. I am going to take a couple of steps back. It tries to take a snap at you. Does it continue? No, it does not hit me. You manage to just barely dodge his rat's fangs as it tries to bite into you. Shield takes the blow. I am going to cast the good old Eldrix Blast. Make some ratatouille over here. Oh, wait. 16. Hit a bit. Nine points of damage. Yeah, just like a kid's ice cream, that rat. <laughs> 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 Vale's laughing maniacally like I am, but also looking at his hand like, holy shit, what the fuck? Yeah, that rat, you see, the torso, the big old gaping holes, explodes out where he doesn't have to. Pretty gross. I really oh. am a great teacher. Yeah. Look at you go. <laughs> here is, here up. This rat here, I don't like him. He's too close, so I'm gonna cast Guiding Bolt. 19. Luckily for you, because of how weak rats are, this one here explodes. <laughs> <laughs> There's not this shining pile of goop on the floor. I'll move further up. See two more rats in there. Their attention is fixed you doing this. It's gonna come skittering up. You're within its walking, so it is going to take try to take a bite at you. Whoa, it crit. What? Oh, I have a re I silvery bugs. Ha ha ha! So I'm gonna reroll an eight. 
That does not hit me. All right, so who are you going to give the next advantage to? I'm giving it to Amira. Yeah! I'm just going to finger guns at her. Here you go. Advantage on your next attack. Uh, I'm sorry. Now for a giant rat, except diseased, going to also skid it up like this. Going to try to take a bite at you with your seven. That also misses. You see these two giant rats jumping up, trying to bite yours, but he's biting at her armor. She's like batting them away and everything. Oh, you're up. I'm going to make fun of the rat for being diseased. Vicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> you sick, sick rat. I can smell you from over here. Disgusting. You guys watch this diseased rat. It loses a bit of its ferocity and now it seems to have like tamed down just a little bit. I'm going to also move so I can okay. see more. All right. Okay, that's my turn. Mira, you're up. Start of round two. What are you doing? The zombies have also taken interest, but that door is stuffing you know? them. They're like reaching out. <laughs> Trying to grab it too. All right, Eris. I'm gonna smack him with my short sword. Add a drink to 18. All that damage. Balls. Sneak attack too. That rat's dead. Yeah. Just to like stab it in its, in its head, quickly killing it. I do want a bonus action. <laughs> it's overkill, but it's like full fighting. On um, this right here? Yeah. Me, you're up. I am Seti Spaghetti. I'm fucking walking over. Shove this blunderbust into the rat. Because I don't trust this game anymore. I'm gonna <laughs> expend a grit to use Dead Eye. Yeah, you make it had no more roll because you're in close. Okay, fine. Boom. <laughs> that, that works, so roll advantage. Woo! Oh, yeah, no, wrap. <laughs> <laughs> You're using your ears are ringing because B, for some reason, C seems to be intent on blasting his guns off <laughs> right next to you. You watch, like, you stop. from the rat's like, nose down to his chest, just boosh, it becomes like gore. The remaining bit of its body just doo -doo 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 rolls backwards. Motherfucker, I'll show you. Fucking make me miss the first rat. Hey, congratulations. You guys dealt with your first encounter. There's He's still like, zombies over here. They are, but they can't harm you at all because they're stuck behind the door. Can we harm them? Because it's a wooden gate, right? We it's like yeah, yeah. So oh. I can just pelt them with Eldritch Blast. Do you want to? I want to walk on over, pick up the pepper box I threw on the floor, and I, I want to start blasting. Due to an absolutely blunder on the design for me, uh, yeah, the zombies are dead. But they're not smart enough to open this door. You guys are just going to sit back and pelt them? Yeah, they're fucked. Even Maybe like as you like strike them, them, they're still just kind of like mm, trying to reach through the door uh... and grab you. I want to check the ground right here. I want to see what the rats were nibbling on. If you're looking at it, there's this disgusting smell to it. You can't really tell if it's flesh or moss. It's like this weird, disgusting, rotted matter caked along the edge of this. A lot of it's been eaten away by the rats. So as you look down into the greatest hole that drops, and you can see dark streaks that run down the hole. There are piles of skeletons at the bottom. So also at the investigation, you find 20 gold. These pots up here. To the door! Jiggling it and test it. It actually appears to be locked in place. Hi, hi. Everybody out of the way. I would like to lock pick. From an immediate glance, you can't really see a discernible a lock. Something I high up the door with my hammer. Yeah. <laughs> only strength check, yes. You should take a war hammer. <laughs> Even though it's wood, you smacks into it. <clears throat> You feel it reverberate through your hammer. Surprisingly enough, it's pretty stout wood. Door remains in place. You do find the locking mechanism, however, down at the bottom. There's metal shackles that lock it into place that seem to extend from the frame. You could certainly try to pick that, but it'd be a disadvantage just from like the angle that you have to work at. This is a wooden door, you said, yeah? I would like to go up to one of the shackles mm -hmm. where it's connected to the wood, and I would like to press my blunderbuss against it. You guys watch as B takes his blunderbuss, takes his like, fat end of the barrel, presses up to the the guys can't breach yourself now. You've heard it before. <laughs> You hear it explode and ring out in the cavern. And as you recoil for a moment, B, and look again, you see that the wood around it is absolutely splintered away. Oh, I want to do it to the other side, too. Take it to the other side. <laughs> Yep, same result. Can we open the door now? Given the test, the door does open up now. A chest for this. Me. A chest is locked. Take a moment. Fiddle with it. And it takes a little bit of time. There's even a few moments where Mira feels like she has it, but there's still one tumbler that's out of place. So suddenly, come there, a padlock, and it just hits the ground. Maybe you should go check for traps first. Swing the chest open. It is thankfully not trapped. Uh, looking inside, Amira, you do find a bag of gold. There's 161 gold, uh, gold pieces in total in it. There'd be a potion of healing and a scroll. I will take all of them. This is a very tiny dungeon. Uh, I remember him seeing Yeah, I would like, say... He's talking about the torches. It's yeah. it's pretty obvious. You can see up here at the main entrance. It's definitely different from the walls around it, because the walls around it are this dull gray brick. And then as you get to this torch, this little assembly here, it is like a brown brick. There's one massive lit torch here, and there appears to be two torches on each side, but they're unlit. Oh! If only somebody could turn on like those torches. torches. I have prestigitation. I want a prestigitation, the small ones, to be lit. With prestigitation, one by one, the torches light up, and as they do, you see the door. The centerpiece starts to 
drops downwards slowly but surely. Eventually, it goes down far enough, and as like this fat piece where big torches starts to hit the ground, you see it like sinks in until the torch is level with the ground. And gives you guys an entrance in. Would you guys like to step in? Yes. Wait. Yeah. <laughs> should, we should probably we should probably check for traps. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I want to check oh, for traps. Oh, they they already went. <laughs> this is a doer. Thankfully, no traps. Step in. You definitely figure out the like, crawling sound that he was talking about. Big old Ooh. bug to the left there. Kind of one across the chasm. You can Ooh. see these like giant oh, arachnid no, no, like no, creatures. No. No. They immediately they perk up as you guys step in. I need you guys to roll me initiative. You guys immediately notice the two big bugs, and there appears to be a smaller. Honestly, it's comparable to a dog. Two? But it has eight legs, and it is really? a reptilian like. Oh, it's oh. so cute! It's adorable! What well, is it? You say it's cute. I feel like Sky would know what it is. Wait, what? Basilisk? Uh, oh basilisk. dear. Oh wait, <laughs> is that the type of basilisk that can like turn people to stone basilisk? We're about to find out. Oh no! <laughs> B, you're up first. What are you doing? I'm gonna move right here. I start blasting. Oh, 14 against this big old guy. Mm. That actually matches. Also, oh, I shit. would like to use fury of the small damage a creature with an attack or a spell. Then the creature is a larger than you. You can deal extra damage. Oh, you're up. I'm gonna cast dissonant whispers. Fail. I guess his reaction failed as far as its speed allows. Oh, big damage. It is bug. Is that one up there? I hate that so much. I want to murder with bug. It is going to take its little pincers. You see it starts to dig into the ground. The ground starts to crumble away as it <laughs> gets to burrow into the ground. So it's in the ground. That's all I can do, unfortunately. Yes, what are you doing? First of all, I can't see anything, so I'm moving over here. Casting guiding bolts on the- 20? Absolutely. 16 radiant damage. And also, next attack rolls at advantage on him. It is other big bug turn, but he starts scurrying back. It's gonna come up to you, B. It's gonna try to obey you. 22, B. Okay, you take 10 points of slashing and 1 point of acid. Alright, that's all I could do, so. Amira, you're up. I'm gonna reach into my bag. What weird and wonderful creature. Well, I, as long as I don't pull a water or two, I think our chances are fantastic. Uh, go ahead, roll me D8. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> You had to say something. Where do you want to put him? Right next to it. Yeah, you reach to the bag and then toss up the creature inside. You guys see a tiny little weasel just He has one hit point. <laughs> it's insightful fucking bug. Yeah, roll seven. I'm pretty sure you got this. <laughs> Are you sure? Oh, well, I stand corrected. That was a bonus action, so no commands to the weasel. It is fucking scared. It is running. It is going to just like scurry off in this direction. Oh, there's actually a weasel there. My god, it's so small. I didn't know it was there until I just saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything. I have a great yeah, perspective. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, he actually misses the bug. See, his cancer comes out, tries to bite it. The weasel just <laughs> like squirms and just bolts with it. He's running. He's scared shitless. Well, yeah. I'm just going to be super imperceptive for a minute and I'm gonna walk out but I'm gonna stay on here so as I'm being startled by this thing I'm going to fall into the river but as I'm falling into the river two wings are going to scratch my back out of instinct and I'm gonna be in the air now holy shit I have wings where these things come from what the heck guys I don't know what's happening what do I do um, <laughs> you'll be fine tieflings don't usually have wings Wait, did he no. cast a spell no nope. these wings they seem to have sprouted from him they even look very similar to Bo okay. just kind of looks confused. <laughs> He's just like, huh, I'm a great teacher. I don't even know how he did that. And he figured something out. As I'm like patting myself on the back, Eldris Blast. Oh, oh my gosh. Yeah. Goodness <laughs> Die, gracious. Buck. <laughs> Wet. Whoa, it's dead now. Yeah, Blow its character's head up. Hey, <laughs> you defeated your first monster. I'm still up here. I still don't know how you did that. It is Mr. Basilisk's turn. Dick has jumped off of this little platform. Sauntering right up. Here. It's gonna go there. It can't go much further though, because there's a big fucking river in the way. Dee, you are up. Send the grit. I am going to use Deadeye with my pepper box, because it has a range of 80. You shooting that Vessels? Yes, sir. 27? Absolutely. You know what? I'm also gonna use the Kafiri the Smalls in there. Oh, Bo, you're up. I. Whoa. Oh, I can see things now. <laughs> I wanna cast Dissonant Whispers on it and hope it runs away. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm saying around. Away. Yay! Oh. You're safe! <laughs> you guys are no fun. That All is my right. turn. I take a bow. It is Bug's turn. Bug in ground. Oh, wait. Bug moving ground. All right. Here it is. Yeah. No fly, what man. are you doing? I wanted to cast Spiritual Weapon. Ta-da! 
perhaps equip my crossbow and shoot at it? Let's go see like a spectacle oh, warhammer just do. I think that missed it. Eleven <laughs> does in fact miss. Yeah, Amir! Yeah. Right. This weasel's still running by the way. Where's the weasel? Wait, where oh, is the weasel? Oh! Oh my god, it's so small! <laughs> <laughs> it's a weasel. <laughs> so Amira's gonna run over here. Amira is also gonna take flight. What? <laughs> Huh? This is what I was yelling at Jeff last session about. I didn't mean to choose the same type of tiefling as you did, okay? So, Amira, that's a fight. <laughs> At least you can teach this damn dumbass how to fly later. And Amira is going to shortbow the motherfucker. 13, unfortunately, this is arrow. Just hits on the stone rock man. For the weasel safety, I'm gonna command it to go to bow. Vail, you're up. What do you know? Because I'm terrified and still in flight, I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna cast. Well, there's one. 15, <laughs> that actually matches Mr. Vasilisky's turn. I am going to turn somebody in this time. You, you, and you. Where'd it go? Oh. Wait, where'd it go? It's right here. B, do me a favor and roll me constitution save. Oh, oh no. <laughs> you are fine. Great, dead eye, and a uh, pepper box. 16. That does hit it. And then I'm also gonna move back. Bo, you're up. I'm <laughs> gonna cast Dissonant Whispers again. <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. You cure Le Basilisk. It dies, and you know what? Just because it's so close, I'm gonna say it falls in the river too. Shoop. Just for the sake of it. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot. <laughs> he is coming up out of the ground and here. Eris, B, and Bo to run my next day. B fails, Eris, and Bo, you succeed. B, you're taking 10 points of acid damage. Eris and Bo, you take 5 as it just like spits this line of acid. <laughs> Yeah, sure. The guy's bug just popped up out of the ground in front of you. Inflict wounds. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at it. 14. That matches. matches. Yeah, you're up. What are you doing? What did you do? Oh, my God. Oh. Oh. It's just the bug. Yeah, and you get sneak thing. attack on that, which is also good. Oh. <laughs> oh, we love to see it. I think this Oh yeah, no, you killed the thing. <laughs> Watch your mirror, she, she, it doesn't look like a very flashy hit, but you can tell it was a critical hit, so it just like sinks into one of its eyes. You see it kind of like rears up, and it just goes like... <laughs> There's something Wait, behind what? that door over there for sure. It looks all spooky. It is easy enough to get across the room. This platform itself. Sounds like a fly, I have no problem at all. I don't want to touch the door because it looks spooky. You touch the door. Oh, they all just going to look at you. <gasps> you have wings too? Are we <laughs> the same? Are we the same? I guess you could say that. How do I get down? I'm going to show him how to like hold out his wings so he just gently glides down. I want to say as that happens, like, I just slam to one side and sl like... <laughs> no, 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 straight straight out, straight out, straight out! All right. You gotta keep so, your wings straight, bud. Stone door is very similar oh, oh, oh. to the one that you saw before with the uh, innkeeper. It is in very similar fashion. It has rooms. The only difference is it still doesn't have a doorknob. It appears to be just a slab of stone. You know, you see those glowing pedestals around the room that are the same glowy power? I bet they do something. I would like to go touch this one. Guys, okay, should I? This looks like the same glowing as the door. If you come up and touch it, it actually, it brings. You hear it hum alive and it lights up. Guys, it's doing uh, something. So you kind of zoom. It lasts for six seconds and then dies out. I'm gonna go hit this one over here. It seems to, it lights up and kind of like hums and then dies out in six seconds. I think we have to I'm hit them all at the same time. Get this one. Yeah, V's got it. Okay, V's got it. <laughs> I'll go hit the other one. Uh, I, I don't know if I want to stand door. by this door. I'm, you want me to stand by the, but what if it opens yeah, and there's just, a monster? Just stand there, look pretty and seduce. Okay. <laughs> Ready guys? Three, two, one, touch the pillar. I'll touch it, and they'll simultaneously seem to six seconds, and they all die back out. Do, 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 do. <laughs> oh, touch the door. <laughs> Touching all at the same time, both touch the door, same result. They all just hum and then die out. Like there's there's got to be some like runic pattern or whatever that will tell us what order. Bo, as you are standing there, you get a strange sensation. You remember, because everyone is under the same influence. You remember the the blue flashes that you had gotten? You feel this kind of strange sensation as it's not like a clap of thunder or something that just immediately jolts in you and warns you. Your sight enhances. Everything becomes crystal clear. Your vision is sharp. And as it sharpens, you can see it's much softer in comparison. There's actually a teal color. It takes a moment to notice, but you're kind of taken aback. You can hear this kind of stern, feminine voice telling you to listen. Listen. And you can hear a particular notes. They happen. 
As you glance around, you can see the teal, this aura, like a string of that color, is bouncing around. It starts at Veil, bounces down to Iris, hops over to Amira, and finally ends at B. Veil, you hit it. Uh -huh. Just you. Then Iris, you hit it after Amira. B, mm -hmm. I think that will work. Okay, whatever you say. The same order that bow seems to have been revealed. Veil, followed by Iris, Amira, and then B. As you zoom, 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 zoom. They all crack and then lean into light. As they light up, the door lights as well. You hear a soft door pulls open. Last thing you hear, though, is good. And then your vision goes back to normal. The teal disappears. Hey guys, I don't know if I should be alarmed, but I, the reason I knew that is so, that, if you remember the, well, Eris and Veil, that, well, it was a different voice this time, actually, but I, I heard a voice and saw, like, sort of teal color. Listen, maybe it was the puzzle talking to you, I don't know. Puzzle Puzzles talk? I'm sure they do that sometimes. <laughs> Have you ever done a puzzle? No, I just do <laughs> puzzles, okay? So, Bo mentions similar to what you all had experienced at the beginning, a different one. Because you remember the first one was a masculine voice. Yeah. This one was female. It kind of reminded you of Rocky's tone. Harsh. And sounded cold. Alright, the door's open. Would you guys like to continue? Yeah. I want a perception the moment I step. Stepping through, there seems to be a long corridor. Comes up and there's a small staircase that leads up. You can't really see very well from where you're at into the room, but, but you do hear sounds. You distinctly hear more sounds of bugs. Big ones crawling around. It is distinct. You can listen to it. It's different from the bugs that you saw earlier. You're kind of thinking more along the lines of arachnids, spiders. Would you guys like to try to sneak up and investigate, or you just want to barge in? I mean, I could sneak up. 20. You manage to quietly poke forward, and it really helps with your dark vision. You're able to keep yourself kind of shrouded in the darkness. You're able to step up these stairs and peek into this room. It seems to be an extension of this dungeon. As you look around, you can see a few barrels, and and seems to go into a corner that actually has a whale. You can hear the sound of water in the well, running water actually. As you look over, you can see to the left, it's kind of a big open area. There is a wolf spider, except it is massive in comparison to normal wolf spiders. It's probably about like the same size as your torso. And you also see even bigger spiders than that. These spiders are probably about the same size as you. They are these big blue spiders. The thing that kind of catches you off guard is every now and then, at random, the spider is just they disappear, and then we'll reappear at a different spot. When you peer forward, you can see there's a lift of this platform, but you can definitely tell there are a couple of pillars, and there appears to be light emanating from that platform in the far distance. I want, I want to talk to the party for a second. I'm going to explain to them the entire layout I saw. I think we should go in and kill them. I don't like spiders, though. Get over it. Tell you right now, I think they're ethereal jumpers. It's an ethereal jumper. They come in and out of the ethereal plane. You guys can sneak forward if you want. Iris, you're going to have to snuff your light out if you want to have any chance chance of sneaking. You and Bo won't be able to see anything. I'm gonna Amira. hold Bo's hand. You, oh, hello. I'll go ahead and let you see it. I will say this will probably, it's probably gonna scare a couple of you. You're snuffing your light out, right? Yeah. So don't be afraid. Iris and Bo, you guys are not gonna be able to see anything. Darkness! <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna I, hold uh, Bo's hand. Yeah, you will hold her. I, I will guide Bo and Eris. If, if people take your hands, I will move your tokens for you, okay? But as you guys sneak up, you can now hear the sounds of these big spiders. <laughs> And you can occasionally hear the soft sound of this, what Amira described as the, the jumping. This, everyone going around me stealth shit. I'll, I'll help Eric. <laughs> the, the little goblin is trying his hardest to grab your hand to help. Oh, yeah, that's a spider, yeah. Oh, there's so. one. I don't see them. How do you see them? I see nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna move here with Bo next to me. Ace, can you move Bo to above me? Because I, I would personally lead Bo away from the spiders. Go ahead and do this. That way you can kind of follow Bo by yourself. I'll do the same for you too, Ace. Are you opening that door? Yeah, I wanna try and open the door. Try to open the door? It is locked, actually. Roll me another stealth check because you messed up the door. Emira, try to fiddle with the door. I kind of it's locked in place. Now you can see these spiders, they perk up, start Great. to crawl towards you. Everyone go normally another stealth check. Suddenly it's... Ah! 
it pops up and it keeps walking as if it was just normally walking. It takes a moment. Fortunately, its eyes seem to lock onto you guys. Armor kind of glints, your weapon kind of glints. It rears up, gets ready, the other one starts heading this way. I need everyone to roll me initiative. You are still in darkness, guys. Oh, no. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> Bo, can you see the damn side? I, I know, I can't! I will say, all you see, Bo, is the faint glittering light of the phase. You see the spider's body for like a split second, and then it goes dark again. You hear it just kind of whoosh. Oh, God. I'm clinging to Amira. Yeah. Anyway, 19. That does it. Yeah, my blunderbuss hits hard. It is now Spoitoir's turn. It's going to crawl to about here. It's going to just make his butt affection. It's space. It's okay. I couldn't Wait. see it in the first place, so it's like it never even existed. There's nothing more terrifying than when you lose track of a spider. Fastest guy moves. Oh, he moves a little faster. He's just a normal spider. He doesn't listen. <laughs> you know what? Just for the fact of it, I'm going to have a dash. It is your turn, Amira. Yeah. I want to fucking hit it. The uh, one in front of you? Yeah. 13. That matches. You killed it. It's like time to die. <laughs> <laughs> I am taking my job seriously of protecting both. Well, I just want right. to say, you hear the sound of like crunching with a splat. I say, it's okay, Bo, I got you. <laughs> I'm going to just pat Amira because I'm going to guess she killed something. <laughs> it's like full fighting. Everything you said with I did is terrible. Uh, deception. Veil, what do you do? Uh huh. So I'm definitely going to cast Eldritch Blast. We got a 16 hits. Ooh, spider's not looking good. All right. Anything else, Mr. Veil? Um, I'm flying now as high as I can. Veil's also going to be like, Bo, Eris, be happy. You can't see right now. I'm not happy. I can't see right now. This is so much scarier. You have no idea. I'm casting light on my hammer. I can't see. Anything. They're all going to be attracted to you. Bring care. Let them come to me. Oh, dear. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I can see the spider. So there you go, Eris. I'm casting spiritual weapon again. I assume you're going to have a whack of spider. Ooh, that is a miss. Kind of pops up a surprise and takes a swing. Spider's used to just pop and in and out of existence, so I just nimbly dodges out of the way. Bo, what are you doing? I'm gonna healing word on B. I think he's hurting. Oh, yeah, I am. Nine points of health to you. And then I want a vicious mockery at this blue spider. My insult is just screaming at it because it's terrifying. <laughs> just, oh my god! <laughs> it takes the damage. You can't see how startled as you're screaming at it. It is the spectator's turn. It's gonna come crawling up and notice that Iris are first. Iris is also a beacon of light, so it's gonna take a bite at you, Iris. It rolled a natural one. But with its bonus action, this piece. D, you're up. There's not really anything to shoot at right now. I'm already in attack. You're waiting there. Spider pops up. Go ahead and roll your attack. Oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Next image, but natural. That's if you guys watch as he is getting ready, the spider pops up. He twists around as he fires. You just see like his gun. <laughs> Stuff of smoke comes out of the barrel. Whatever happened, it malfunctioned. Spider pops up. It originally had its eyes on Aries, but now it sees bows like really close. So it's gonna take a bite of you, Bo. What? Okay. Oh my fucking god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any spells left. It did crit. You do take 11 points of piercing damage. Ooh. I need you to roll me a constitution save. You probably do not want to fail this. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> and on top of that, you take an extra 26 points of poison damage. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> Here's the thing. It's poison. Because how does poison work? You go down, but you're stable. Yep. While you're poisoned this way, once you regain hit points after this, you're poisoned for an hour. While you're like this, you're paralyzed. Okay. Alien. That's what that tells me. Don't so, Oh, yeah, spider pops up, caught Bo by surprise, and you see its fangs just like jab into Bo's like gut, like the side. And now Bo is like falling to the ground, and you see he's now in this paralytic state. Amira, you just watch what happened for you. What are you doing? Kill me. Yes. <laughs> Fucking Amira's, Amira's coming for a head. 13. That matches. Vale, you're up. What are you doing? Out of sheer terror, Vale's going to look at that bug and notice that the person who taught him how to use magic is now down, and he's going to scream out, I, I curse you! And this red or is going to swarm around it. He is now afflicted with the Hexblade's curse. And then I am going to cast second level magic missile. Yes, it is your turn. What are you doing? I am going to first use my bonus action to cast Divine Favor. Gotcha. And I'm going to use my action to okay. work out. 15? That is a strike. That spider is good. Warhammer comes down, the little part of its head just... <laughs> now this one is originally interested in Aries, so that's going to Come up, Eris, taking a bite of you. Ah, uh, I can't even make this up. These spiders are fucking critting left and right. You'll take 13 points damage. I'm already dead. 
You down? Okay. Well, you're not paralyzed then, because the poison didn't kill you. And the bag did. B, you're up. These spiders are down to your teammates. Well, I'm gonna do the only thing that I can do. Nimble escape. You <laughs> fucking coward. <laughs> no, I, I, I nimble escape all of this is bonus action. Disengage hide. I'm up. Pepper box. I think that's a misfire. <laughs> your pepper box. <laughs> and yeah, you're up. Short nice. sword. <laughs> Kill it. Squash it dead. I'm gonna give Eris a uh, healing potion. <laughs> I would like to drag Bo into this room. <laughs> yeah, Eris, you heal five hit points, better. Eris um, looks a little bit upset and angry. <laughs> you mean looks normal? More so than normal. I would like to take a couple minutes to unglodge my guns. I don't think we should open any more Pandora's boxes until we get some rest because. I'm not okay. I will take a short rest first, and then I'll do the rest of the watch myself. Everyone holds up and starts to rest away. You don't really notice much. I'll say the only thing you do pick up on is the atmosphere seems strangely heavy. This place kind of gives you the heebie-jeebies a little bit after you get your short rest. You're on nerve, and you realize that for the most part, you're on attention more than usual. Like your guard is up, and something almost like an instinct is keeping you on edge. You could feel almost like a different presence. But you're sitting there, veil, you're keeping watch over everybody. You feel chills run down your back. Thankfully, you are somewhat similar with another being just interacting with you, talking to you. This isn't her. You snap up to attention as you look around. You can't see it. Something is watching you, but it's not in a malicious tone. It is almost seems to be just curious. Does it say anything? It doesn't. Hello? Who's there? There's no response. But you can feel it. It is curious at first until it begins to subside. You feel it. It's content and it feels happy as the feeling fades away. Okay, you guys take a long rest. Can I slap Bo in the face and be like, you almost died? Um Sorry, but that really hurt. What? I'm not uh, dead. No. Iris, do you want to light up again, or do you want to keep it down? Yeah, I would like to do that. But did we ever find out what's in this really. door? That door's locked. Oh. Oh, that's spooky. I don't, I don't no, trust no. that. We, we walk it's back. Going, it's going, familiar. No, we walk back. <laughs> I was say, I'm going to go find the store. Door. Yeah, that door actually opens, yeah. Oh, huh, this one does too. Oh my god, stuff. Uh oh. Oh, Mr. Vale, you are wandering off. I don't know what you mean. I went in the door at the top of the left. <laughs> you come in blindsided by the item, you start rushing towards him. Does a, does a 10 hit? As you're running in there, you hear something. <laughs> something reaches out and tries to grab you. You didn't notice it at first. And as it attacks, you see it almost looks like the literal shadow on the wall it reaches out to you. <laughs> Tries to grab a hold of you. I need to run around me initiative. I'm going to kick his ass. He's new to this world. It's not his fault. <laughs> oh <laughs> dear! Away. What did you awaken? <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> that was so many. Can I use my first action to blunderbuss Jeff? Emira, oh, you're first. Dash. I'm gonna use my action to pull out another animal. Four. Ooh. Ooh what is this? Fun. I'm gonna Maybe throw it into the room. There you see. This boar pops up out of nowhere. <laughs> Yeah, well, B just saw a mirror run the other way. He has no idea what the fuck's going on. So he's going to saunter on over. And then, just in case, he he readies a pepper box shot. Oh, you're up. I'm going to walk over. I cannot you, see you what's going uh, on, like, arms in front of me. Like, I don't even... I love it. All right, Vale. Time for a world of pain. There are three of them that are going before you. This one's going to saunter over. You can't see it, but you can hear this weird... <laughs> It's gonna come, it's making a tank at you at advantage. Does a 14 hit you? No. Can't see it, but you can see the gray darkness in the room. It shifts, and then you see hands. <laughs> Has come out, just slams against your shield. You hear more shifting. Eleven, another. It violently hits your shield. Twenty-three. It comes down the shadow. Unfortunately, it thinks fine. It smacks into you, you're taking eleven points of necrotic damage. Your strength is reduced by four. You feel as the hand slaps into you. It just saps the strength away from you. And what's your strength right now? Four. <laughs> you need to get the fuck out of there, Vale. I will action disengage out of the door. After Vale's turn, it's a bunch of their turns. Um, Eris, can I have some healing, please? You hear, you hear this whiskey 
comes pulling out of here, you see what appears to be this shadowy humanoid form start to slip out. As it comes sauntering out, it sees you, it's gonna try to take a snack at you. But it's not an advantage because you can see it. Is that ready my action for something to come out? Go ahead and take a shot. 15? That here? Does that resistance to my bullets? Non magical effects. Fuck. So it takes half. It takes a smack towards you, Amira. Does 18 hit? 18 does hit. 10 points of necrotic damage. As it smacks into you, you feel like, oh, it also trains four points of strength in you. So you have four now, too? Yeah. So what happens if we get to zero strength? Oh, you're gonna find that out. <laughs> Still got some of these bad boys coming out. Oh my god. In the boy. When, when you hit zero strength, you die. You don't have the strength to draw breath. You just fucking right. keel over. The boy's gonna make an attack. It unfortunately misses. It comes up, rears its tusk, just its tusk kind of just go through it. These other ones are seeping into the room. They can't make it to the fight just yet. Iris! I'm going towards it. Oh, to I can it. see it. So, first of all, I'm gonna guiding bolt because that's radiant damage and I feel like that's good against a shadow. Thing. 18? That hits. Not only does it take that damage, it is vulnerable to radiant damage. <laughs> It takes double that damage, so the bolt just hit the square in the chest, and you see the shadow just nice. crumples up and sinks away. It is dead. One shot! Good job. <laughs> I like that. Amira, you're up. Hey guys. Ooh, I don't like that. Uh, I'm gonna go behind the blunderboss. I want a bonus action eye for detail. I will say, if they come out here, there's probably a zero chance they can hide. It's an empty corridor, and Iris' light is shining through that whole corridor. Mm. If they come out that door, they are 100% being spotted. The moment anything comes like out here, yeah, I'm gonna hold my action to attack. Uh, B, you're up. What are you doing? I'm ready. Another pepper rock shot. Oh, please tell me you have something that can heal me. Do you want to run away? Because I can make you run. Wait, you can see me, yeah. right? Please yeah, say yes. See, yeah. Okay. I, I have sight. Yeah. I have 10 HP, and then you can run. You can, uh, I'm assuming you can to everyone. Yes, everyone. So everyone gets five 10 HP, and if you want, you can use your reaction to move up to your speed. I'm gonna ready dissonant whispers. Thank you for saving me. You're <sighs> so welcome. Tries to come creeping out and just like I said, when it comes out the light, it just immediately spotted. Pokes out the door. Go ahead, whoever's taking the ready to action, sees him. Uh, my ready to action was within 30 feet. Then, in that case, B will do his. 12 matches, so it'll take half that because they're just not magical. 9 points a psychic, and then it has to run away. This one is actually going to come sneaking out. Alright, I'm shooting the fucker. That hits. It's full damage because it is magical crossbow. This third one, actually, it's not going to seep out. Through for a moment. Veil. I'm gonna Eldritch Blast. That is a big ol' hit. Would you look at that? It is also dead. The force hits it and it shrinks down. You see it just dissipates. <laughs> this one is going to. Oh, yeah. Would you like your boy to attack? Yes, please. <laughs> Holy crit! <laughs> it is still half damage though because non magical. <laughs> like a uh, squealing pig as it just. like <laughs> weirds up in the shadow. Oh. I have a present for you. 18. <laughs> Matches. You only take five points in the card, but do you suffer a strength zoom of the only one? Yeah, yeah, if your strength's 14, it's 13 now. There's another shadow in here. They can only move 13. Just makes it out the door. Another shadow. Oh, this one, I'm pretty sure can make it a pretty good distance. Yes, you're up. There's three of these guys. Bonus action. Cast Divine Favor. And then I'm gonna action hit it with my Warhammer. But it'll take half of the eight, but then double the gradient. Yeah, yeah. I want a bonus no, action steady. Well, 19, that absolutely hits, plus sneak attack. That was just enough to damn it. Ooh, you're up. I shall use my pepper box, because I have literally nothing else. Oh, you know what that means? I have another pepper box. Did you have another? Again, these pepper box just... It's even debatably louder than the normal shots. And the only thing you see is like smoke chop up out of the chambers and like a, just a quick spark. Yeah, it obviously if, malfunctioned. If anyone looks at me, you just see me fucking smacking this man. Motherfucker again. Oh. I'm gonna do the same glamorous thing I did before and everyone back up. And then I wanna dissonant whispers. Again. Also, it's dead. It's that Shadow's turn, but he's dead. Veil, you are up. I cast Eldritch Blast. 13 points a youch. This one is going to run it down. That's the turn. Hi. Here it's you. It's just one centered up to you. <laughs> <gasps> oh, no! You are like a damn executioner at the fucking hard <laughs> stage. Just. <gasps> <laughs> crush that thing. For the sake of it, you guys are out of combat. There was some that ran away. Guys, we gotta close that door at the very least. I ordered the pig to ram the door shut. 
There we have some dark shadow. <laughs> Let me ride the pig. I think we should take a little long rest and hope that um my strength and uh, your guys' strength comes back. I don't know, but we're gonna get hit. If I get hit or our sky gets hit once, we're dead. Yeah. <laughs> Can we what? go back into this room, guys? True. The one that the shadows came out of. No, the room that we were safe in. There might be more shadows. I feel like there's Somebody probably- Somebody else walk in there. I don't want to do it. What? Okay. You're a fucking coward. I'll do it. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 don't. Because if there are more shadows, what if they hit no, you? No, wait, wait. No, Amira, please. Hello? Wait, gentlemen, first. Let me... <laughs> if you're going to open the door. <laughs> it's as quiet as ever. It's already in here. Also, I'm fixing my gun. You said also, Amira's, Amira's going to walk up to Vale. Two hands on his shoulders. Leave the <laughs> opening of doors to me. Okay, I'm sorry. Right, so I'm going to take another long rest. Tavern kids. I, I, think I think he probably like, thinks we're dead. Who wants to take watch first? I'll do it. I can still take half the watch. I'll take the last watch. Oh, okay, I'll so, sleep like a baby. Alright, B, go ahead and let me step and check for the first watch. You don't notice too much other than, again, this, like, heavy atmosphere that seems to hang in the air. It feels kind of eerie, but other than that, not too bad. Uh, second watch, feel. Go to move step and check. What you felt earlier still kind of lingers in the air, but it's... It's not watching you anymore. It's not as intent in keeping track of you. Amira, if you were still taking last watch, go ahead and remove perception checks. You notice it as well. It's kind of heavy atmosphere in the air. It seems to kind of worry you. You realize it's more of like a, uh, it's almost like a spiritual kind of feeling that seems to just lay into you. And as you sit in there, it's very similar to the two that you've seen so far. The blue flashes, um, and then the one that Bo talked about, the teal one. It's similar to that, but it's almost it's not talking to you or anything. It just feels like it's watching you. You feel almost exposed. Even though you are in enclosed space, brick walls around you, it feels like it offers no safety. It is not malicious, really. It seems curious. You all get a long rest. Do we have our strength back? It's gone. I can open another door. Chad, door, door is locked. All right, guys, I'm going to lockpick. It takes a bit of time. This is surprisingly more complicated lock than the rest of these. And you actually notice that it seems to be better condition than the rest of the dungeon. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. I don't know if you want to open this one. Why not? Because you see the other doorknobs? This one's in better condition, which means it's been really well maintained and something's been visiting. There is somebody wouldn't, who comes here often. Wouldn't the tavern keep above us have warned us about something like that? I don't think he's really set foot around far. here. There's probably another entrance. All right, so what's the plan? What are you guys doing? I'm gonna if you want to try to pick it, go ahead and open another deep stool. It opens up. I'm gonna, I want to check for traps. Nobody step in. It seems that whoever made this, whoever was locking you out, they were intending for the lock to be the only thing to keep you out. There's no traps here. Over this lip over here, there was definitely light, torchlight. And you could hear the soft flickering of some flames. This area does look a little bit more upkept. Mind you, it's still an old, dusty dungeon. But compared to the rest of it, it's definitely, I would say it's like, it's been traversed. Somebody's been here before. You see that wooden platform in front of you? It goes up and seems to lead up towards whatever that flame is up there. I'm gonna take a peek ahead and be very careful. D d go back! I I'm gonna motion for somebody to grab him. I'm, I'm gonna mouth the Aeris. Fuck, stare Huh? <laughs> uh, you're seriously asking the- okay. Whatever. Yes, <laughs> you step in my way. How big is Ares? Uh, they're good near. Oh, perfect. Can I tr crawl underneath her legs? For the sake of it, Amira is blocking your way. There's not really any way you can slip past her. You do see a long corridor. There's some urns that appear to be present. One of them knocked over. Dust and bone seems to be dumped out of it. You can see a slight staircase that extends. And on that platform, you can see what appears to be Four pillars surrounded by a soft bed of yellow flowers surrounding this coffin in the middle. There's to be a bunch of lit candles. And in the dead center, there is a pitch black coffin. There appears to be some kind of runic writing on them. And it seems to be dotted with almost this like glitter effect. You see me like kind of pacing somewhat. Do, do I get closer to it? Do I not? I'm gonna go back and report my findings. Can I do a religion check? <laughs> I was about to say, hey, Can I religion. I do a religion check. Sure, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It is definitely something of significance. It's something of power. It relates to a deity, it sounds like. What deity it is, you have no idea. You'll have to inspect it closer. And Amira can't really convey the, what the symbols look like, so you can't translate them. I want to take a closer look. Wait, 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 don't leave me in the dark! Amira, the moment you crest that staircase, that feeling is back, that atmosphere. It is heavier, though. Not only is it heavier, but 
the beings that have been guiding you. You can feel you've grown used to it over these past couple of days. This feeling of them being there starts to wash away. Whatever this coffin is, it drove their sensation away, their contact to you. And the same thing goes for anybody that walks over that staircase. I'm gonna go back to see if I feel the connection again. You do. So there's nothing more than that. There's no communication from them. Can I go closer? <laughs> Look at the symbol on it. You can't. You can't really translate it. It is, um, do you speak, um, Celestial? No. Yeah, do any of you speak Celestial? I speak Celestial, but he doesn't know he speaks Celestial. You could probably read it like so you know it Yeah. Then. You can translate the rings. All it says, all around the coffin, is the king of the stars. That's all it says. I tell them that. As you get closer to it on the lid, there is a figure, that hooded figure, that you see on that coffin, it looks like this man right here. Should I open it? Can oh I do to see it? No, are you crazy? Let's just leave this thing alone. I really want to open it. Don't open it. It is an awful idea to disturb God's resting spot. I think we should go to the tavern owner and just be like, Ayo, to one more day. Just don't let anybody in yet. Or we could just tell him there seems to be some sort of religious place here. Well, we should go find more information about it real quick. We should go keep clearing out the dungeon. Alright. Uh -oh. um, you all get it simultaneously. The moment you pass this door, it's just one by one. Or however you leave the door. It is the blue flash again. It all strikes through. You feel. It's weird because it comes out of you, but it originates from him. It is a fear. He tells you a singular word leave. Do what you guys want. Well, I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. Just gonna wait. I need to scroll. I need to scroll. I need to scroll. Okay. Yep. Yeah, just gonna. Yeah, goodbye. Just gonna. Yeah, I'm what gonna, was I'm that? Gonna, yeah. Let me out. I'm gonna enough. run back and grab a bow. Thank you. Yes, please hold my hand. <laughs> you guys skitter back through the antique dungeon, finally scrambling back up. As you get closer and closer, come to see that the door, which was supposed to be left open, is closed. The one to the tavern, or like one of the The one we told the tavern guy to hold open is closed. Mm -hmm. And we have to go through the water entrance. What? I want to punch the door open. Can we try pushing the door? I'm getting on this and pushing. This door is not budging. This door is locked in place. I'm just gonna start angrily and violently knocking on it. <laughs> it's like this. <laughs> it's like this dull hollow. <laughs> How thick was this door? Did I happen to notice when you walked me through? You're looking about three, four feet stone. It's possible that something we triggered down here magically locked us in. Or the tavern keeper wanted us to see that room and then locked us in. That would suck. I hope he... Oh, he seemed lovely! I... He actually didn't seem that lovely, but still. I mean, in all fairness, we were kind of down here a while. Like, we, we rested quite a bit. He might think we're dead. Wait, originally when we came out, didn't, didn't he say there were no locks? That's a very good point. There was no lock on the door. It's magic it did have, field. We definitely... It, yeah, it did have the same rooms as that one door that you guys opened with that puzzle. So when we oh. opened that door, we probably locked this one. Maybe we can go back to the door and do the same sequence? I think we have to go at the other exit. What other exit? Well, there was water. We can swim out. Well, something told us to leave. We don't know that that thing is good. I, I mean, yeah, but that was terrifying. It was probably a god, not not my god. I don't want anything to do with it. It's some kind of divine power. I don't think it could possibly be weak. I'm not convinced. If we touch them in the same sequence, maybe it will lock the other door and then unlock the first door? Maybe. It's worth a shot before we decide to go to the waterway, which we don't even know if that leads out. I mean, it might. We can stop on the way down. I guess all I yeah, see I, is I like Bo's idea. It's probably the most likely to work. Thank you. I regret saying that. I'm still telling you, I don't think it's gonna work. I mean, if it doesn't, then we can do the waterway. But if it does, then we don't have to get our clothes wet. Oh, I see what this is about. <laughs> no matter what plan you're taking, you're heading back, it sounds like. You start heading back as you do. You feel it's another flash. Blue this more as time, even more panic seeping in. More fear. It is almost begging you not to go there, not to go back. As you get about halfway through, you start to realize why that atmosphere is expanding and it is stronger than what it was. You guys begin to feel it reaches forward as it does. You feel pins and needles. It's like a wave of influence kind of hits over you. Iris, 
Chris and Emir, your back studies. Here's the thing. There are levels of power in this world. You know, the average adventurer with their techniques, their features, their abilities, magic. That is kind of a, a scene level, you know? And then you get to higher powers with detect magic, things that you can see past the material plane. Magical sense. It's enough to put, to strike a bit of fear into you too. Or this is a power that is so strong, you physically feel it. It's not very often that happens. Whatever deity this is, this is like him sleeping right now. For his power in a dormant state like this, to give you pins and needles, that is bad. You now realize why the flash of blue, this entity, you now begin to realize why he's so panicked and fearful. You guys came across something strong. This is bad. And you both almost kind of realize it at the same time. There's a very, very slight fear that whatever it is, you have potentially awoken it. Like, we couldn't, we didn't get out the other way, so there's no other way to go. Look, Bill, if you're new to this whole magic thing, we do not want to go anywhere near that. So we stay in this corridor for the rest of our lives? I'm, I'm with the goblin. Oh. Magic or no magic? I mean, not. wow, she's scared of something. It's kind of scary, actually. I have an idea. If this is what happens, look, okay, Amira, mm -hmm. take out a pig, right? I ride it through. Make sure it's safe. And you follow. That's a, a pig. horrible idea. Then you'll know it's not safe. Um, B, I don't know how your magic sticks work, but would you not make it go on the door? Bibbity bobbity boom them away. Yeah, or boom the door. What the stop this one? And I put to the stone door. Maybe? Well, I don't oh, know how your boom sticks work. So, okay. So, and then he's gonna go into this really long, drawn out explanation how firearms work, going into every single video he can. And then he gets pulled after five seconds. Yeah, yeah he's trying to sit there shaking his head because he's not using normal science terms and he's confused. Yeah, basically, <laughs> after like, let's say about like 10 minutes, he ends on the notion of like, and basically what happens is there's not gonna be enough force, and then he takes a, he takes his blunderbuss and shoots a door just to show it's probably. <laughs> Open it. A creating just, noise. When you do that, we're all on edge here. It just <laughs> the rubs. The bullets. I mean, you definitely put some like notches into it, but yeah, it's gonna take a lot to blow through this. Yeah. Thing. So yeah, basically what happens? I I don't have enough power. Like this does a lot. It, it's not very good against stone. Can you make Iris, a bigger one? I need you to do me a favor, Iris. Roll me a d4. Oh, Iris, be the first one to sleep, followed by the rest of you. All of y'all almost don't even comprehend it. It's just to you, due to your cleric nature, being a full spellcaster, you recognize it. You hear a quick, this weird drop, followed by, you guys hear, the breaking of stone. If there's any time to see Iris scared, it would be now. Beads of sweat start to form. You realize what you just experienced. Time froze for a second. To be exact, it froze for 18 seconds. We're rude. At this point, y'all are almost literally being pulled, urged by the blue flash. It is trying to pull you back to that door that you were trying to use before, and it is telling you, go oh, now, go oh, leave. I'm booking it. What? Did this? I was gonna say, I can yeah. go back. Uh, I'm booking it. You guys, start to run back. You not feel it. You can feel it. All of you. There is the force is heavy. It's almost enough to make your stomach churn. Almost enough to make you want to vomit even. Whatever is in that coffin, it is out now. And it is roaming. And as Eris explains, time literally froze. God knows what it did in that 18 seconds. As you rush back, come back to this door. All rushing into the door. Just hit against it. All pushing against it. You hear the soft, just... It's weird. It somehow sounds light but heavy at the same time. Almost like it's barefoot but armored. Strange senses of sound. As it gets closer and closer, you feel one at first, and then ten, fifty, a hundred, thousands. That is the presences that you're feeling, the entities that are in that room, and it just keeps expanding. Five thousand. 10,000, it rapidly expands. You're pushing against the Iris, go ahead and roll me a strength check. I'm like, oh my not, god, oh my no! 
Oh, you're pushing, you're pushing your ass. It feels like a few times after this door will not budge and you begin to fear your, your heart. It quickens, starts to race. You feel like an animal trapped in a corner. If you look back, this the power, the sense of this deity. This is more than an army. You are feeling millions, even higher than that, billions of people. There's no way in hell that anybody could stand up to whatever this is. You get that feeling, and that's enough to, it, it just saps the strength out of you as you are trying to desperately get out of here. And you really kind of lose some wounds. And it may even flash through a lot of your heads. This may be where you die. You see the figure, it peaks, tunnel distance. <laughs> steps again it sounds like cloth it sounds barefoot it sounds armored every possible step you could imagine even similar to the bugs that you've heard a slithering sound it all meshes into one you see what appears to be this dark humanoid figure dark flames seem to flicker up off of his form too brilliant purple eyes with this starry background. <laughs> he starts to reach his hand forward, the wispy hand. He's reaching out to you guys. He's coming. Go ahead and make that strength check, guys. Hey, um, wait, wait, nudge, nudge. Anybody who can help, like, hey, let's help push. Um, I push on the door. I push as well. Huh. In oh, bardic no. inspiration. <laughs> I want to! A new sensation. A flash. <laughs> oh bounces along you. This one is red, and it is a burning sensation. It's like something wells up inside of your chest, similar to when you feel like an adrenaline surge. And you guys can see through your eyes a frame that extends off of all of you. You can see your forms expand, and red lines pull up off of your figures as you push and push. Finally, you <laughs> And you hear this crackling, popping energy. You are literally pushing so hard, you're separating this magical barrier from the door. As you... You're not sure if it's fear or what that drives you, but something is driving you. As you push, push, finally, you hear it. Something snaps in the door. Blows open. Almost as easy as a wooden door. You see it smashes into the wall on the outside. You see his figure, this humanoid figure, is surprised. It starts to quicken his pace. Y'all <laughs> 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 jump out and slam! It slams shut. This door is like suddenly almost weightless in comparison to what it was. As you guys slam, you hear it, it cracks in and the seal reapplies. You see the outer edge. <laughs> flashes as it seems almost locked back into place and you can hear the figure on the other side <sighs> he hits the door guys we should run <laughs> like run hey, out tell the tavern keeper do not open the like door evacuate, like evacuate like evacuate a tavern keeper he should probably find a new place <laughs> yeah, and like everyone <laughs> evacuate yeah, no, put this up for sale <laughs> you don't want to be here as you all sit there you realize the feeling of his power disappeared. That's somehow scarier. This, this was not a dungeon. This was a prison. We just opened it. And closed it again. No, pretty shit prison. There is a figure. He appears to be gazing over. Very similar to a crystal ball, but it's not necessarily a ball per se. It's like a big table and it has this illusion, this images projected. It is you guys all of you, traversing and doing this dungeon. The figure that is watching, he appears to be made of literal fire. Blue flames kind of lick up along his body. And he's just sitting there watching you guys. As he seems to be observing, he watches as you guys approach the door. The one that took you a while to open Amira. You see his eyes kind of widen. And as you step in, he immediately starts to get up, frantically starts to make a few gestures. He starts to do them over and over and over. He sees nothing's getting through. Starts to panic a little bit. See, he rushes off. He quickly starts to get up. He seems to run off and fetch another person. Seems to pull along a female. She's draped in chains. That her dress actually is the color of teal. She comes up, takes a look at it, seems to explain to him, mentioning that there's really not much she could do to get across. There's a field that's preventing their communication. You see the panic kind of sets in as you guys get closer and closer. And at this point, the blue man is practically yelling not to touch it. Do not touch the coffin. Do not touch it. And he is screaming, banging on it, just praying that you guys hear him. And you can almost see this sense of urgency as you guys <laughs> come within inches of it. As he could do nothing but just sit there and desperately watch. He feels a sense of relief as you guys begin to kind of head back. As you start to walk 
walk back the moment you go through the door. He slams his hands down on the table. You need to leave as you guys seem to take notice, beginning to make your way back out. He's urging you guys, doing his best, starts to make a bit of incantations. Blue energy courses across the table. As he watches the events unfurl, you guys being stuck, he keeps urging you to go back to the door. As he looks around, he runs off. It seems to fetch another figure. This one clad in heavy armor as he steps up. Heavy footsteps glowing from his armor and even his cloak is all red. As he comes by and you see the blue guy kind of points to him. He says, listen, now is the time to help them. You need to help them. They need to get out there. You see, he seems uninterested. Kind of, it's not my problem. If they die, they will die. We will find new adventures. <sighs> Turns his head away. You see the blue guy looks back to the table. This is the point now where the figure had broken out of the coffin. The guy looking back to him grabs a hold of his shoulder and kind of pulls him back in, forcing him to look at the table. It's like, listen, we were given orders. You need to save these people. I don't care what it takes. I don't care. I'll do anything. You need to get them out of there. No. You see, there's kind of a moment, almost like a power struggle between the two as they seem to stare each other down and almost anger as it takes a moment. Finally, his hands, the table, pulses this red energy. The moment that happens is the moment you guys begin to push the door open and finally, with one resounding, close it shut. You see the blue man sighs in relief. The armored figure looks at him, pokes into his chest and almost pushes him. You owe me. Before he turns, walks off. Heavy armor resounding on the floor. You remind me of that one guy from that one anime that I can't remember the name of. This is very specific, thank you. Uh... Fuck you, Scott. <laughs> 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 Doors, yeah, it's gonna give us problems. Isn't it usually gonna give us problems, actually? I think, I think so. we should blame Hal, guys. What the hell? I did! Uh, yeah. You probably didn't uh, blame Hal? I, I did, kind of. I was like, oh, hey, <laughs> it's not me! <laughs> Is this a river of like magical powers casually flowing through the underneath of the tavern? That's my sister. Hi. It does. No! <laughs> Alright, since everyone's doing it, I'm gonna sprout my wings. I was what? <laughs> What's this look like on stream? Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, bow. Rush. Oh, wait, never mind, you did. What? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody, anybody, have, you have any radiant like spells of area protection over there? <laughs> um, because I'm a hexblade, mm -hmm. I use my charisma modifier to attack things. Mm -hmm. Can I do that? Um, the door? Yeah. Charisma the door? <laughs> Yeah, I'll just seduce it. I got it. I got this. I got this. Oh, oh, <laughs> Fuck you, Infinity. Oh, Great 